Welcome back to day two of the 2021 Texas Workforce Commission Virtual Forum. Enjoy your session, and remember, complete the survey for each session that you attend. These surveys will be sent to you via email at the end of each session. Welcome, everybody. We're at our last session. It went so fast today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And we are in the career exploration in a time of uncertainty session. My name is Pamela Brockhausen, and I, along with Anita Smith, will serve as your moderators. Together, we'll be in the background monitoring the Q&A and handling any issues that may arise. So please note you're not alone in the session. You're part of a larger audience but all attendees are in a listen-only mode for the duration of today's session. And as a reminder, this session is being recorded. The participants would like you to submit questions at any time during the presentation. Use the Q&A panel. What you want to do is go to the bottom right, click on Q&A, type your question into the text field, but be sure to click the drop down and send it to all panelists before you click send. And uh, if you really enjoy the session, you can open up the participants section and use the tiny megaphone to give feedback. We may be having closed captions. If you see a multimedia viewer for external site, you can click OK to get closed captions. If you experience technical difficulty at any time during the WebEx event, please submit to us at the Q&A panel and we'll try to assist you. You can also enlarge the video by using the Expand View button at the bottom right, the second button from the right. If we do not have time enough for all your questions, the presenter's contact information will be displayed at the end of the session. And just a reminder to complete the survey upon exiting. And with that, we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's presentation. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce our speakers for today. We have Raquel Garza, Hireability Navigator from Workforce Solutions Golden Crescent. We have Ramsey Olivares, Chief Innovation Officer from G2 Global Professional Services, LLC. And we have Martin Sanchez from Pathways and Technology, Early College High School, P-TECH Administrator from Victoria Independent School District. And I'm pleased to turn it over to you. Good afternoon. Thank you for participating in our session, the career series, career preparation, and career exploration. Um, th this afternoon, we're going to talk about our partnerships that we've had within the community. If you could move to the next slide, please. So for this project, we collaborated with four um, major entities, um, one of which was VISD, Victoria Independent School District, our Workforce Solutions Contractor, C2 Global, our local um, education connections called CBEC, as well as communities and schools within our region. Together, the four organizations hosted a two-week event, which became the foundation of what is now the Career Series. The initial event included over 60 presentations scheduled every hour on the hour from 9 to 4 during a two-week period, and each session was about 30 to 45 minutes with the time for Q&A. Next slide, please. Martin, you're going to need to unmute. So over the past few years, uh, Victoria ISD has hosted a career uh, slash job fair for its career and technical education students. Uh, I I recently received um, the position as PTEC administrator, but prior to that, I was the career and technical education counselor for Victoria Independent School District. So I coordinated the career fair, job fair for our students. 
The event of the goal of the event, the uh, career fair, was to expose students to various careers and educational opportunities in our area, and also have the students interview for prospect with prospective employers and hopefully be hired uh, with those uh, employers. Uh, members from the community, industry, and uh, CTE advisory boards are invited to review resumes and conduct conduct mock interviews. Students also re receive constructive criticism and advice on how to make themselves more marketable and presentable for their jobs. Um, usually we would have about 15 and 20 representatives from various industries that would participate in the event. Uh, participants uh, usually would fill out an entry form that would let us know like you know what what jobs what kind of jobs would they have open if they were actually hiring at that point in time and if they would be willing to interview some of our students our students prior to the event would spend about two weeks preparing for the event where they would actually complete a resume half mock interviews and again having their resume reviewed by one of our uh, uh, volunteers from from various industries. Um, on average, about 20% of our students who participated in those career fairs would be would receive a job offer. Uh, next slide, please. So, basically, how did this come about? So, as I mentioned before, this career fair had been in place for uh, for several years, but roughly about a year ago. Um, when, and we had to go back into, uh, we had to uh, start working remotely due to COVID. We still wanted to continue to expose students to career opportunities and just let them do some type of career expo exploration, if nothing else. So we started brainstorming. Uh, Raquel Garza has been um, a contact that I've worked with closely as far as coordinating different programs and events to promote um, education in general, career exploration, anything that will benefit the students uh, in their uh, high school and post-secondary pursuits. But uh, we started brainstorming and trying to figure out how it is that we could continue to promote um, the career exploration to the students. And so that's when we started uh, considering how we could actually put on a virtual event for the students to participate in. Next slide, please. So our target audience consisted of um, incoming freshmen through graduating seniors. That was our initial target audience. Um, we definitely wanted to uh, expose them, the educators, the parents, to the possibilities of various career industries and career clusters. Uh, so we promoted not only to our seven county region, but also to our ESCs. And that then um, went to the masses throughout the state. Next slide. So initially, some of the challenge that we found was um, the platform, how we were going to um, get our, our information out there. A lot of broadband was not within our small rural communities. Also the marketing, we had to figure out how to market and get to the students who were now working remotely from home or studying remotely from home. And then recruiting some speakers. Uh, initially, um, they too are working from home. And so we had some hiccups in getting a, a lineup. Once we accomplished that, we have approximately 75 to 80 different speakers. We then um, began scheduling them. So. Of course, since with a high capacity and a two week period, it uh, required a lot of planning and preparation. And then we had to then figure out how to target and get the students to participate since uh, they were now working remotely. Uh, some ISDs did include it as part of a participation grade. Some uh, asked just to make it a, a classroom activity. So it had some enticement to participate for the students. Next slide. So uh, Ramsey will be speaking on how he created the, the Zoom via the website. Um, so what I did is um, I know we all have a lot of, of different 
IT demands and, and boards and, and a lot of different constraints when it comes to websites and, and reaching out to the, to the students. So what we did is Raquel asked me to create a website. Um, I use something simple. It's called Wix, W-I-X. It costs about $6 a month and about $6 a year for the URL. And uh, we, we put a lot of our information on there. Um, so we made it mobile friendly as well for our, our, our students. So they were able to, to log in through their phone or through their iPad or at the, at the school on a computer. Um, so what we did is we just basically put everything together there. We made um, links available for everyone to register, and um, and we were just able to broadcast that way. Uh, next slide. And, uh, Raquel, do you want to go over this one? Let's go back to the previous one. I wanted to um, emphasize the highlight of the 16 career clusters. Um, Martin, can you emphasize the importance of each of those career clusters? Well, we chose the 16 career clusters other oh, um, that TEA has within their pathways. And I think Martin can emphasize the importance of those and how um, we came about getting each of those presenters. So we uh, used the um, basically just reached out uh, to our advisory board members uh, from each of our CTE boards to help us um, either they themselves or additional uh maybe to some of their contacts or whoever it might be uh peers to help us uh, recruit speakers for our our event we what we wanted to accomplish is basically find at least one or at least one person from each of the career clusters to be able to talk to the students so that way we are providing the students with a variety of different resources and also um they can see exactly what, what is out there, and especially within our uh, region, within the Victoria ISD. So when we reached out to them, we asked the presenters what we would like to hear, how COVID impacted their um, work facilities, um, answer some generalized questions of what um, they went through in regards to their education, in regards to training they have received, whether that was on-job training or um, post-secondary training. We then asked if they could demonstrate a project or their tour of the facilities. Most of them were capable because they did have a remote working device, whether it be a tablet, um, a camera, et cetera. So during the presentation, the students not only had the opportunity to ask questions virtually and um, live, they also were able to tour the facility of that speaker. Next slide, please. So the sessions occurred of the initial discussions occurred last year, May 11th through 22nd within 30 minute increments. And there was there are plans and there is plans actually to continue the project. Actually, this week we have it um, going this week, Tuesday through uh, Thursday. And the website is gccareerseries.com. They not only received a uh, career exploration, but they got uh, the webinar registration and virtual tours there. And we'll delve deeper into that in our later slides. Next slide. I think you asked this already, but um, what type of activity or what place in Wix for students to interact with? I'm sorry, what was that question again? What type of activity um, or what else did you place in Wix for the students to interact with? Uh, we're going to get to that on the next uh, couple of slides. Okay, so um, so on the and we'll I guess we'll just jump into that now. So on the career exploration um, on the website, we did career exploration, workplace readiness, and we did that's where we set up all of our um, our our Zoom. Um, kind of going back to, to Wix, I'm not a computer programmer. I'm not anyone that can code or anything. It's just a drag and drop uh, website. And we'll show you the website right now. 
but it was really easy to create, to set up the um, appointments, uh, it, confirmation emails, everything like that was set up. So it was really easy for our, for our customers to get in there and, and, um, and register. Um, one thing I wanted to hit on also was the, the website. Why did we go to an external website? And, uh, you know, we're, we've been in workforce for a long time. I've been in it 20 years, and we know there's a stigma when it comes to workforce. So what we wanted to do is kind of create something different for our younger job seekers. Um, they might see us as as the unemployment office or, or something. So we really wanted to change that for them. And also, we could get this um, updated pretty quickly. Um, Raquel could send me a text or give me a call, and I could update it pretty quickly instead of maybe going through our formal channels or IT groups and having them do that when we know they have a million other things, especially during COVID, you know, when everything was, when they're trying to get everyone up and running for, for virtual services. So this is our website that Raquel has on the screen right now. Um, if you want to go through a few of the slides, or I mean, a few of the screens, we can, we can talk about that. So, for example, when we're talking about this week's event, um, we go to event registration here. We currently have three events this week, as well as um, next month in the month of May, we have to plan the mock interviews. Um, the mock interviews will consist of one, more one-on-one -on -one dialogue where a student who has ambition to become, say, a welder can request information. So we'll go here to the RSVP. He or she could RSVP and put in their uh, personal identifiers of what is their uh, class grade level, what ISD do they attend, uh, what is their career ambition. And so then at that point, we would then find a person within the industry that would uh, be able to do a mock interview. We will allow um, C2, our workforce contractor, to participate to ensure that um, there's no um, questions that are off topic or that gets skewed. Then we also have these here where um, you can, Martin can emphasize that um, his high school's classrooms and teachers have been utilizing these, uh, these programs for their junior and senior level students. Over here, I'll allow Martin to emphasize the importance of, of the um, pathways I apologize, there's a lag. Well, we'll move on to the next one where our career videos are. And here we have chronologically and, our, excuse me, archived um, our spring 2020 videos in addition to our elementary. Since we um, now through Perkins Five, we now can go into um, fifth grade. So here we have our elementary career series in addition to our um, secondary career series that we did last year. Here is the virtual tours and Ramsey. You could um, go through that. Yeah, so, um, so what I like about the company I work for is they let me play with all these toys and come up with ideas. We were doing this before COVID um, because of safety and we thought, well, you know, this was pretty cool before then, but now after, I think it's even more uh, relevant. So what we did is we uh, we bought a, a camera and we went to a bunch of different work sites that Raquel and her team set up for us and we, we basically did, um, did tours of the site. Raquel, if you can hit refresh on your screen just so we can go back to the to the main screen before it hits the screen. So what happens is we take our camera and we place it inside a, this room, for example, this is a radiolog radiological um, room in the hospital. Now, normally we will not, or a hospital would not allow, a, you know, our youth customers to come in through here or to, to just walk around. But by using virtual reality in our, in our cameras, we're able to do that. So what Raquel can do is she can actually walk around the room. Um, if you see those little white translucent uh, dots on the floor, she can click on them and she can actually move around the room and see what the rest of the room looks like. She can look up, she can look down, um, she can, you know, look all around to see what's, what the room would look like just if she was in there in the room uh, herself. Um, we also took a, a lot of notes for a lot of the different instruments. Um, it, if she wants, if you want to click on one of the orange dots, you can kind of see what the instrument is. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. Uh, that's a sharps container. 
Um, you know, you can learn about all the different tools that, that are in that room, um, even if someone's not there to kind of show you about it. The cool thing with this is that we've actually, um, it's kind of, it's evolved in the last year and you're now able to put on a, an Oculus headset and walk around this room as if you were actually in the room using the same uh, link. So that's a, a pretty neat thing that we're doing for our job seekers. Again, before it was because of the safety, but now it's kind of because of the safety in COVID, people are actually able to walk around that room and see what it's like to be a radiological tech, uh, see if that's something they would want to do. We've done probably about 50 of these recordings from police officer uh, headquarters to, to new home construction to, um, to, to labs where they have all the, you know, the liquids and the blood and everything in there. So people can really get immersed in there and see if that's what they would want to do and maybe um, think about that job a little bit more. Couple questions for you. Is this accessible to those with visual impairments or hearing impairments? Because they notice the background of the previous screens are all red and difficult to see what is in the background. I'll let Raquel answer that one. And I, I created this with, you know, just with my limited knowledge in that. So if there's anything I can do to make that better, I, by all means, I will. And what's the name of the software that you use for the visual aid? It's called Matterport. Matterport? Matterport, yes. Thank you. And, uh, real quick on Matterport, what it was is um, people were using it for real estate when they were walking around houses and selling houses. And let's say someone from Wisconsin is trying to buy a house in, in Victoria and they don't want to get on a plane just to tour the house. They could actually walk around the house using this technology. So we kind of incorporated the same thing with our work sites where we really can't, because of safety, get someone on the location because of this. Um, all of our employers are really excited to see this because we were actually able to give them the link as well, and they can kind of incorporate it into their trainings when they get new uh, new staff on, on hand. So regarding the um, visual impairment, I do see what you are, what the viewer is um, concerned about, but we do appreciate the feedback. And if they could, um, are you as the host, if you could share our email addresses, and we will share them at the end, any um, candid feedback or areas of improvement, by all means, share that with us so we can ensure that we are accessible to all individuals. Um, I can, I understand the red co color scheme is tough for some. So thank you so much for addressing that issue. We could um, fix that rather quickly. Sure, one more question. Um, did you develop these VR modules yourself or was this something that you purchased out of the box? No, we did it ourselves. Uh, Raquel had an intern that she let uh, travel with me to the different uh, work sites, and we were able to to go around and and, and not only in Victoria to to pull these work sites because they, uh, you know, the radiological tech at the hospital is going to be the same everywhere in in, in Texas in different regions. But um, yeah, it was just the, the about an hour or two of work afterwards just to transcribe the notes of each of the different tools and so if possible we'll go into a patrol um the police uh patrol room just to see the difference and ramsey if you want to just explain what y'all did here yep yeah, again same thing it's it's just going into to these different rooms to show people what it's like We've done this for prisons. We've done this for for um, for different types of offices. We've done it for automotive automotive offices. I mean, uh, actual uh, garages. So, just a lot of things to let people see what it's really like to be at these uh, work sites and to see what it is to walk around. Um, you want to do the home construction site, Rico? That's another one that we can kind of see what. This is a safety one. I can't have. I can't take any. I can barely go myself to this without you know without some possibility of injury. So working with the, the foreman and the company to, to allow us to walk around the, the work site when no one's there, no one's working, they cleared out a day for us to kind of go out and do this. So they, it's really working with your employers, your business partners, and kind of letting them know what's, um, what, what to expect so they can, so they can kind of make, a, make accommodations for us as well. 
you're getting lots of comments about how cool it is and how well done it looks and uh, how great it is to have all that controls and produce the video yourself. It is exciting, you know. I mean, kids love that stuff, right? They love the VR goggles. I mean, and imagine putting the goggles on and just walking around the room like you would here. Uh, you're going to need a pretty big location before you run into a wall at maybe your house. But it's <laughs> it's really neat to be able to look up and look down and just look behind things and, and really see that. Uh, the, 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 you know, the, the technology behind this is really... It's really smart and it works with you. So you just take a bunch of pictures and you upload it. And from there, uh, you know, the Matterport will put it together for you. And after a couple hours, send it back. And at that point, that's where the real work starts, where you start editing it and adding um, different uh, captions and, and stuff like that. Okay. So, so these are, all these links will be available on, on the website that Raquel will send out later. And you guys can kind of walk through them and 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 try them out and uh, and see what you like about them, what you don't, and and you know just see if that's something you guys would do. It's a minimal investment, but it's a, I think it's a really neat thing to do, um, especially now with with COVID. So we apologize for getting so skewed away from our our slide deck. If you want to share that, and then we could hop back onto this. Um, we'll toggle back and forth if possible. Yeah, the comment looks like a lot of work went into doing these virtual tours, and it's very important work. Thank you so much for sharing. It's very exciting. And, you know, one thing to add is maybe, you know, if the group in Victoria and the group in Corpus Christi and San Antonio, they can all work together to get even more work sites as a group versus just individually by, by region. Uh, you know, people can explore different opportunities. Every region has different targeted industries and different clusters. So, you know, being able to do that across the, the state, I think, is very, really powerful. Okay, if you go on to the next slide. So here's what the initial marketing that we had done. Um, obviously, we wanted to alert to a, a younger audience. Um, we use this for both um, our our first and second events for both the the high schoolers in addition to elementary age students but then with the second one unfortunately we don't have that right now we did want to promote a more mature audience so we changed this up a bit it doesn't look exactly the same but we've kept this um, more juvenile approach for the younger um, age group go ahead and move forward Martin, would you like to explain the the scheduling of presenters? Uh, yes. So, uh, as far as recruiting, initially, I mean, we uh, we, uh, we were trying to figure out how do we get people to want to participate in this event. And fortunately, uh, with different uh, with people that we've collaborated with in the past, um, and people that we know within the community, it, it uh, actually we ended up with more people than what we were expecting. And when we actually sat down and put our list together of all the different volunteers and speakers that we had that had agreed to be part of this series, we ended up with over 60 presenters. And so initially we had wanted to make this a two week. I think we had talked maybe even the possibility of just doing it for one week, uh, but when we started putting the list together, it was like we have more people than what we were what presenters than we were expecting. And so that's when we started. We had to extend the event. And not only that, but we also had to look at how we were going to accommodate all these people. One of the things that we definitely don't want to do is turn people away. We want to take advantage of every opportunity, everyone that is willing to support us and definitely support our students. And so as Raquel mentioned earlier, is we basically scheduled speakers every hour on the hour from nine o'clock until basically five o'clock and uh, actually I'm sorry it was 10 to five in the afternoon is when we ended and so we had a very good response uh, but again it, it I think at, at one point we were very overwhelmed with trying to coordinate and how we were going to put all the different speakers out, um, and schedule them basically next slide So this 
this here, um, Ramsey can elaborate on. Um, we have C2 um, pr promoting their classes. They have a particular um, syllabus and plan that they adhere to, and they then present the information to the students. Ramsey, would you like to elaborate on that? Yeah, we have this for students and adults and even uh, senior citizens. So we we have a, a basically a two week boot camp on, and it might it might vary from from region to region, but I know we generally there. Morning, they get a lot of uh, uh, from marketing yourself to workplace etiquette to the interviews, and it's a lot more of the self paced stuff that they're doing. So what we do is um, we we really make sure that they know about this. I think one of the most uh, powerful parts is the, the mock interviews where, where individuals can kind of see themselves and what they've, you know, how they interview and, and, you know, review some of the questions that they are answering. So it really does get everyone ready for, to get into the, you know, the, to mark themselves and to really be ready to, to interview. Next slide. So with this, I mean, we were planning on um, going into do a deep dive. Does anyone else have any questions about the website? I know we did go over it quite a bit just a moment ago. Um, we can share that again if, if anyone does have more questions. No questions, just a comment um, about diversity could be a way to improve that it was all white people, I guess, in the photos. Okay, well, thank you for um, for that feedback. We appreciate that. We'll, we'll try to um, clean that up for you all. Um, the next one here, if you want, um, and we'll take that feedback and we'll get that addressed as, as soon as possible. On the next slide, so with the career clusters, and, in, and Martin can go into that, we did divvy it up and we had initially the health science and we broke it up based on their career of expertise. So we have each of them within 30 minutes, as he stated, and some did overlap, but we had a, a good steering team to assist with picking up all those um, different sessions. In addition to that, we then had um, the criminal um, justice and um, STEM, arts and visual technology, human services, um, and so on. We had each of the 16 that TEA uh, acknowledges and we broke them up in the clusters accordingly. Next slide, please. So within the website, and uh, Martin, you could emphasize this, this is the 16 clusters that you can find there. Excuse me, the nine, I apologize. Right, so we basically had um, the the different um, pathways, and then what we did is when you clicked on any of these, Ramsey actually linked it back to the Texas Education Agency website that actually created or or has the one pagers or what we call the one pagers that basically outlines what classes the students can take in CTE for each of the different programs of study that are offered. So I, this was a really great um, opportunity for our students uh, because we opened it up to our, the entire district and. Um, then so we had students from elementary up to 12th grade that had the opportunity to be part of these events and what we really emphasized especially to our eighth grade students is that they could look at one of those CTE programs of studies, what we call the one pagers, and they can see what classes they could actually take in high school. So it pretty much laid it out for them. It also talked to them about the industry based certifications, what kind of uh, possible uh, projected salaries and need. So those are some really good resources. And that's one of the things that we really wanted to promote to our youth is that this right here, this one web website encapsulates a lot of information that could benefit and, uh, and, and Ramsey did a really great job of making sure that the information was connected. So, uh, but, but when students went to this page, they would click on, for example, health science, it broke up, it, it shows the students the different programs of study and then it, can, uh, it tells them what classes. Uh, they could take, which again is one of the, it's a great piece, especially when you're working or advising students and trying to guide them into a specific um, what, what, uh, field of, of study or career. Martina, if I can add to uh, the website has everything 
if someone maybe couldn't get on during, you know, last May and maybe over the summer they wanted to get to, they could learn about all the careers, they could learn about the different work sites, they could uh, revisit the, the recorded um, meeting. So even if someone wasn't able to get onto it then, they're still able to access everything as, as they were. Yes, that is that is one of the things that we did. Every presentation was recorded and then uploaded so that students who were not able to participate at that time could participate at a later time. And actually, we are currently using some of the recordings in our um, in our current classes. I oversee a P tech in healthcare, and our healthcare teacher is actually using some of the videos in the classroom because the people that participated in the events actually. Uh, Work, worked in that field, so they have that knowledge and experience uh, that they can convey to the students. We did provide the presenters with some uh, speaking points, some prompts to kind of help guide the conversation. So that was one of the things that uh, that helped. Uh, we tried to pull questions together or come on FAQs that students will probably ask during a presentation, and we uh, gave those to our speakers. Next slide. Okay, so at this point, Ramsey can go and once again, just highlight the importance of why we would want to use VR and the importance of it, especially during these times. Yeah, so it's uh, the VR part was, um, it's really grown the last two years. At first, it was more of a, a, a way to entice the, the younger job seekers, the youth customers to, to kind of engage with them at job fairs or at events. but what we um what we really started doing on C2 we worked we started working with Transfer VR and they actually started coming up with a lot of trainings for different regions um plus they've been doing a lot of trainings um for employers when it comes to a lot of the safety issues so uh, a lot of the reasons people use VR is because it's immersive confidence building risk free and uh, it's a trial run so if you look at that picture right there on this individual is actually climbing up those stairs behind him um and if you're like me, you're going to know pretty quickly that you don't want to, that you're afraid of heights. So that's something that maybe I don't want to work on. But, you know, using this and putting those on, it feels like you're in that atmosphere that you're that you're there. Um, so it, it's really, I, I really like it. I enjoy it. It's fun, but it's, I think it's a, a real world experience for, for me to know that I'm not going to be climbing up those, um, that ladder at any time soon. Next slide. Um, some of the words aren't coming out, but but again, it's just on the on the same thing. That right now, what we've been primarily using is Oculus uh, Quest. Uh, Oculus Quest is is probably the leader when it comes to a lot of the virtual reality. A lot of companies using that in addition um, or two joints that you walk around with, and you can you know right now, but there's a lot of companies, including Walmart. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, Halliburton, uh, even hotels that are using this as a as a way to train their their staff. Next slide. <clears throat> again, we with the benefits. Again, we were going to present this a while ago, and and it's really evolved. But it's it, a lot of the virtual reality right now we can use while people are are at home. Um, a lot of people have their own headsets. Uh, headsets are, I think, for the people that, that don't have them, they're probably around um, $199, $200. Um, I saw a question come in through how heavy are they? They're not very heavy at all. Um, I would probably say about a, a pound. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about a pound, a pound and a half. Next slide. And uh, Raquel, do you want to talk on this one, the people with disabilities? So um, one of the benefits of using VR for um, for students with disability are it, it highlights two of the five pre-ETS, so pre-employment transition services, which um, one of which is career exploration, the other one is work readiness. Um, a TVRC could utilize this um, VR uh, goggles, they could rent them out from our workforce center and have a deep discussion with the student if this is a correct work environment for them, what do they like about it, what do they dislike about it, and just have a one-on-one -on -one candid discussion. And it also, I believe, Ramsey, y'all have software or y'all have shown us some information of maybe the workplace etiquette, interviewing skills and communication skills that they can utilize and just um, 
break the ice before they actually do, whether it be a mock interview or a actual um, interview at a workplace. So utilizing this, I would highly recommend not only for ISDs, but also our transition counselors or just general VR counselors to um, check out and then um, bring back to the workforce upon completion. Next. Yeah, slide. some of the trainings that we that we have preloaded right now in our goggles are, um, I believe there's a customer service one, but the one that we, a lot of people really enjoy is the measuring. Um, and it shows you how to use a tape measure and not only a regular tape measure, it shows you how to use a caliper and you actually have to use your hands and the joysticks as you would the, cal the, the caliper in your hand. Um, before you get into using the caliper, the joist or the, you know, measuring tape, it kind of walks you through a little, you know, um, I would say just getting ready so you can actually pick up blocks, put them on something, uh, you can drop something, you can see how it works. It's not, um, it's not very hard to get into it at all. And then from there you can start, you have uh, one of the trainings that I'm thinking about, you have different checklists that you have to actually go through and check it off before you can move on. Uh, the, the measuring one, I believe, is a three-hour training that you need to kind of achieve all things before you can actually move forward. So it's not just a game. It's actually more than that. It's, it's showing you real-life skills. It's showing you how to, uh, before, before I even tried it, I never knew what a caliper was. I never knew how to use it. And after using it, I could, I could probably go and do an interview now and explain it a little bit better. So it, it gives you some of these tools that you can actually take to that interview, like Raquel was saying. And, and and talk a little bit more some of the words for work that we you know always preach about next slide please so i don't know ramsey if you wanted to share any more um about the website and the virtual tours or yeah the, i mean we have these listed on here we have a goal and it's a lofty goal of this year you know now that everything's kind of reopening and people are getting uh, back out to, to get another 50 work sites and just start archiving these and having them so we can always have them for, you know, if someone wants to be a police officer, we can show them a patrol room, we can show them a patrol car. If someone wants to work in a hospital, we can show them the different things. So uh, that's our goal for the year. And we'll just keep adding them to this list as, as, we, as we finish them up. Next slide. And these are just some of the examples that we had. We showed you, uh, but yeah, we have from labs to new home construction. We have a vet. Uh, we have everything. And uh, you know, most most industries now. And I, like I said, we want to start expanding and just really going to as many as we can in this next year, and, and really building up this uh, this listing for our for our students. Next slide. So to emphasize the community collaboration, we um, partnered not only with a local um, CBO, but also CIS, which is um, not only nationally, but statewide. Um, those two organizations really helped promote and advocate for the, um, the events that we have, the planning. We did take some from a, like a steering team, a committee of what their students that they hear and they work with what would they like to see? Um, our CBEC, our Crossroads um, Business Organization, they have a catalog or a group of business members within the community that can assist with just presenting information and being candid, being a mentor and helping out the students with their career choices. So we appreciate everybody involved, whether it be VISD or any of our ISDs within our region, in addition to these two organizations. Next slide. So Martin, would you like to review some of the lessons as a ISD member, what we learned and, and how can we execute better in the future? So one of the first things, again, uh, we were we had an overwhelming response from uh, our community uh, as far as wanting to help and, and be part of our, um, our, of our virtual series that we put together. Uh, so it does take a lot of planning. And for us, it was a very short turnaround time. We, again, we brainstormed trying to figure out what it is that how we can provide the students with these career explore, exploration opportunities. 
And I, if I could, Raquel, correct me if I'm wrong in Ramsey, but I think it was just within a matter of two or three weeks that we put this whole event together where we came up with the idea, let's how we're going to implement it. And we just ran with it. So a lot of it was just basically figuring things out as we went, but it does take a lot of planning, especially when scheduling your speakers and them and you being flexible as to how you're going to present when you're going to be able to present. Uh, collaboration, and I think this is one of the things that Ramsey and Raquel haven't really expanded on, but both of them have been really great and very supportive of uh, the school district, especially when I reach out for different or various events. They're always willing to help and collaborate, uh, support our different initiatives. And so I think uh, speaking from uh, just the general public or from someone out in the community and from an organization, I did not realize how much help we could actually receive and how much support we can get from our local workforce board. So I think that is one of the things that uh, moving forward, um, other communities need to know about and how they can also collaborate um, uh, to support our students in our community. Uh, as uh, IT infrastructure, I mean, we were all scrambling at that point in time to figure out um, how to do things virtual uh, as much as possible. So definitely exploring different platforms. Uh, you know, uh, Ramsey was really great with uh, with the website. And so just trying to figure out some of those logistics, I think a year later, um, we have a little bit more knowledge. <laughs> we, we have a little bit more experience and we have a little bit more wisdom. But at that point in time, I, I mean, I'll have to hand it to both of them. I mean, they were basically pioneers in something that was new to everyone. So figuring things out was definitely, um, especially with the, uh, the IT, the website, the platform to host the different um, events uh, or the speakers was definitely a challenge. Uh, student participation, again, it was one of those things that we didn't know exactly what to expect. Um, students were going remote. Um, you know, some students had devices, some did not. So student participation was not as high as we uh, had expected. And, and again, uh, you know, again, uh, this goes back to Raquel and Ramsey is initially this started being a VISD event. Eventually it became an event that that would expose everyone within the Golden Crescent service region. And then through my contacts with CTAT, which is the Career and Technical Association of Texas, we offered them the opportunity to promote it to their campuses, to their schools. And so not, it not only became a Victoria ISD event, it became a Golden Crescent regional event, it became a state event. And Raquel actually um, received um, some requests from people um, out of state that, could, that wanted to be part of it. So again, it became this, this major event uh, that we weren't expecting. And, and one of the other things is, again, going back to this, that was our new reality or our new um, where we were at that point in time. Uh, virtual meeting etiquette is like teaching, talking to students about how to behave when they participated in the different events and even some of us adults as well. So it was definitely a learning experience and uh, I think we, we, we learned a lot as, as we made our way through the through the event. And Martina and Raquel, one thing that I'd add that it was, you know, a lesson learned was just having the right board partner that wants to do this as well. Um, it's a really easy to say no, but I mean, the total investment of this was maybe $400 uh, and plus some stuff. Other than that, for the technology, the camera, the, the website, the software, it was four or $500. So, I mean, the amount of students that we worked with and that were able to learn and, and, and really go through this is, it was really, um, I mean, the ROI on that was great. So it's really having that board that says it's okay to do this. Let's try it. Let's, you know, that's what I like about my company. You know, they, they say, try it. If it doesn't work, then we'll try something else. But it's always just, you know, the, the board, especially there in Victoria is really open to trying different things and working with the students that way. Thank you, Ramsey. I do want to emphasize that now a year later, as Martin said, it, the the environment is different. So student participation isn't so cumbersome because we know now how to capture the audience. We know 
where the student may potentially be at. So what we have really utilized is not only um, local TVRCs, um, we have um, utilized the ESCs, ISDs, etc. And like I said earlier, with uh, the two nonprofits or CBOs, um, community-based organizations, they help just advocate the message a lot easier. So we're not trying to figure out how do we get these kids. Um, a teacher can then project it onto their uh, screen now, and 30 students can watch the same message, whereas it was one by one by one, and it's a lot easier that way. And it's somewhat similar to this, where it's a controlled audience, and if they want to have any answers or questions addressed, they can just put it into a chat panel, and whomever's presenting at that time can then um, just get everything live, and whether it is how did they get to that place in their career or what school they attended or um, could they speak with them one-on-one -on -one offline. It's just a lot easier than going into a large forum, a large session where expo halls need to be rented out. Um, so things have changed. It's a new environment, new workplace setting, but hopefully we're making strides as we move along. Next, Martin will address um, any other collaboration efforts that we've done in the past, not only with them, but um, other ISDs. If you'd like to move to the next screen, please. So as I mentioned, uh, <clears throat> we have collaborated with our local uh, workforce board for several years on, on several projects. I think one of the first things that Raquel and I worked on was uh, creating a CTE information night where basically we invited all of the students in the school district uh, that either were identified as uh, special education or 504. And so what we wanted to do is to invite them and provide them information about the CTE programs, but not only that, but also uh, to make them aware of the transition services that are available through, um, uh, through workforce. Uh, if you can uh, click to the next one. Again, uh, Learn to Earn. This was basically an event that we had been hosting uh, through CTE, but we used it, uh, we enhanced it and, and grew it even more so uh, through collaboration with uh, uh, with our local workforce to, uh, to not only include VISD, but also other uh, school districts within the region where students were exposed to career and technical education and the opportunities that were available uh, are available to them through that. Uh, next, please. And actually before last year, I think it was the prior year, that's the first time that Ramsey introduced us to VR uh, virtual reality. And so we did have one session uh, as part of our Learn to Earn where students had an opportunity to use the goggles to uh, learn about a specific job. I don't remember exactly this one, what they had to do, but I think they had to uh, grab a tool, climb up a ladder, and repair like an antenna or something along those lines. So again, going back to that, I mean, these two, um, uh, Raquel and Ramsey, have definitely been pioneers in helping us to promote career exploration to our students. Uh, next, please. And again, they support our different initiatives. This is our career and technical education signing day where our graduating seniors get to uh, basically commit to continue with their education, go directly into the workforce, and are continue at a, either, either vocational or technical school. Uh, next, please. And again, the collaboration doesn't end. Um, we had, this was an event that basically, I believe it was for, all seventh graders in the school district, uh, district um, well, not all, maybe not all seventh graders, but a, a good portion of our seventh graders and seventh graders from other school districts participated in this event that basically we held it as a conference, just like uh, we typically, you would typically attend. And so when we put this together, that the, we were, we thought we were crazy. People thought we were crazy because uh, basically we had one general opening session and then we let these couple of hundred seventh graders just run through the building to find their session. But fortunately, uh, it went very well, very smoothly. But again, it's going back to that collaboration with the workforce and other uh, industry members. Uh, next, please. And then, um, 
again, collaboration, collaboration, I can't emphasize it enough is uh, being able to work with your community and the school districts. Uh, last summer, I was a actually able to put 10 students in a place students in a welding apprenticeship program for four weeks. And I could not have done that without the support from workforce. And it's just basically um, knowing the people that you can reach out to to establish some of these programs in your community and being able to, again, it's about the students uh, and being able to provide them those opportunities that they probably wouldn't have otherwise. And next slide, please. So this wraps up our, our presentation. Here's our contact info. And like I said earlier, anything that you want to address, um, we do take your uh, concern seriously, please email the three of us and we will um, definitely edit and modify accordingly. Um, the QR code there on the screen, that takes you straight to the website. So please feel free to utilize that. Uh, this session is recorded and we will be able to distribute the slides in addition to um, the recorded session. But um, if the gentlemen don't have anything else to add, um, we are free to take questions at this time. Great, if anyone has any questions, feel free to type them in there. This has been so exciting, you guys. I've really learned a lot and it's so amazing how much you have done. And definitely calling you um, a Chief Innovation Officer is a great title for you, Ramsey. <laughs> so I wanna thank you all so much for sharing your knowledge and pioneering you know, for other people, how they can follow the same path and produce the same things that that you have done so well. And you've gotten a lot of comments from people saying great presentation, really good information, well done. I'd like to thank everyone in the audience too for participating today and coming to see this. And um, any other last thoughts from anybody before we go, our speakers? Looks like there's no questions. Have a great day, everybody. All right, thank you. All right, well, if that's all, um, thank you, everybody. And when you click the X button, then you will be having a survey pop up in your browser. Please do complete the survey. Give us some good feedback about what you liked, what you'd like to see next time. And we'll see you again next year. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for attending the 2021 Texas Workforce Commission Virtual Forum. We trust the information was beneficial and will help us better serve the people of Texas. We will see you next year.